All right, test to review. Um, make sure you practice showing your work. I've noticed that students shortcut things in their homework. They shortcut things that aren't turned in, and then all of a sudden they need to show work on a test, and they're not sure how to do that. So make sure you're showing your work as practice. Makes it good habit, so you always know that you're doing that. Um, there is no credit given for the even for the correct answer on a test if you can't show your thinking. Okay, so it's an important part of learning your math. So, all right, simplify five square root of eight. That is a, not a perfect square. So, the greatest factor that's in it that is a perfect square is a four which is square rooted to a 2. This is going to be 10 square root of 2. So A would be 10 and B would be 2. Okay, if it's asked that way. Uh, 75, let's see. Square root biggest uh, perfect square as a factor in 75 is 25. 25 times 3 is 75. Square root of 25 is 5. So this would be <clears throat> 3 times 5 times square root of 3. So my final answer is 15 square root of 3. That would be the simplified version of that. Um, this one has an index of a 5. So let's think about um, roots of five on on your um, on your review sheet it wouldn't be a bad idea to write some references or have your flashcard handy for your squares if you don't have your squares memorized if you don't have your cubes um, your fourths and your fifths um, memorized it just it would make your life easier if you did so um the fifths that i need to keep in mind are 32 and 243 those are perfect fifths perfect fourths would be what 16 81 256 625 perfect cubes would be 8 27 64 125 squares were what four nine 16 there's a lot of squares all right we'll do more if we need them but you get the idea so 64 is not a perfect fifth of anything but you should recognize that as a 32 times 2 to get a 64 Okay, so that is a perfect fifth of 2. All right, and then there's that 2 there. So that's going to be 4 on the outside. And that. All right, so those are, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the number parts of that. And then we have x to the 6th power with a fifth. So that it goes in, well, there's one, one set of five x's in there and one left over. So that itself is going to turn into that. Okay. And then the y's, there are seven. So there's one y that's coming out and two y's that are staying in. One y that's coming out and two y's that are staying in. So my final answer, if I put that all together, is 4xy, then the fifth root of what's left is 2x and y squared. That's how I do those. I hope that's helpful. And I showed all kinds of work doing it, okay? <clears throat> all right, here's another fifth root, 729. For fifth root, all I have for fifth root up here was 32 and 243. Um, <clears throat> so let's try the 243. 243 times what? So 729 divided by 243 
is 3. That is a perfect square of 3, 5, 3, and there was a 2 out there. So this is going to be 6, 5, 3. That's the number part. Okay? And then x, I have 23, 5. 5 times 4 is 20 with 3 remaining. So 4 come out and 3 stay in. 4 come out and 3 stay in. Then you got to put it all together. So 6 is out. Uh, x to the 4th is out. 5th root, nice and neat, so your instructor can see the difference between your exponent and your index number, and they can read the index number. 3 is left over inside, and 3 x's are left over inside. Okay. Um... Let's see, can't do anything with this, that's going to stay, but this is what? Perfect square in that is 25 and 5, so that's 5, 5 plus times the 2 is 10 square root of 5. So let me go ahead and bring that down, and then this is not a perfect square, so there's a 4 and a 7, so that's a 2 and a 7. So this is going to be minus 8 square root of 7. Like terms need to be combined. So my final answer would be negative 10 square root of 7 plus 10 square root of 5. Those are not like terms. Do not combine them. Okay? Remember what you need. You need the same index. They have the same index, but the radicands are different, the 7 and the 5. So you can't add them. You can multiply them, but you can't add them. Okay? So 45... That's a 9 and a 5. That's a 3 and a 5. Put the plus back, put the 9, 5. Those are like terms. So you can add those and get an answer of 12 square root of 5 for that one. 18. 18 is a 9 and a 2. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the x in there because it's not coming out. So the 2 is left over and stays also. So 3, 2x. And then 32 would be 16 and 2x, so 4 and 2x. So I'm assuming that I'm going to end up with a 2x. It would be a good way to guess and check your way to something. So 2 into 128 is 64, which is a perfect square. So that worked out. It doesn't happen all the time if they weren't like terms, but that's always a good way to start to check. So that makes that an 8 square root of 2x. Then they all are like terms, so you can take 3 minus 4 plus 8 and get 7 square root of 2x. Okay? And this last one here, let me get a little space going. Okay. So 8, 4, and 2. 2 square root of 2, the 10 is a 5, and the y is a what? Because in 8 times, that's 16 with 1 remaining. Alright, so let's put that together. This first term will turn into a 2 on the outside, 5x is on the outside, 8 y's on the outside, and then a 2 y on the inside for my first term, okay? There's a lot going on here. Um, this has a 2 and a 3. The 2's not coming out. In fact, I'm thinking the 2's going to stay if it goes with the first term. It may or may not, but let's handle the 15. So you're going to have x to the 5th come out. That's a 3, sorry. That's a 3. Remember, we're dividing by the index. That's going to give you 24, which is um, 8. So y to the 8th with 1 left over. All right, and the 2 is staying inside. So this is going to turn into 3, x to the 5th, y to the 8th. The 2 stayed in, so 2y. So notice that... 
we are getting like terms here. Okay. So that's probably what the last one is, or it could be something different. You never know. So let's make sure we're doing everything correct. So this is going to be, um, oh, look at that. I fell right into the trap. Look at this here. I, I processed that right, but then I didn't write it down here. So that is not a like term with that, is it? Because this has a two right here. So unless it's a typo, it's something different. So let's, let me do this one the way it is here, and we'll just make sure it's not. So that's a 2, so that's an x to the 4th. That's a 2, so that is 7 and a 1 half. So 7 are coming out, and that one's staying in. And there already is this out here. So this is going to be plus 3. How many x's do we have? We have 1 there and 4 here, so that's x to the 5th. Then we have 1y and 7 here. That is y to the 8th. Then we have this 2 and that y, and that's 2y. So, so this one right here is a square root, and it's the same as that one right there. So those are like terms. That middle one's not because that is a uh, cubed root. That looks like a 24, but it's a 2y, okay? So my final answer, and it's not a typo, so I'm looking at the key here, so negative 3, so I'm just going to take this one first, 3x5y8 cubed root of 2y plus, I'm going to have to write it down here, sorry, 5 x 5y8 square root 2y. Okay, that whole thing is my final answer. Those are not like terms because they're different indexes. So be really clear about that.